What's going on guys? We are back with another video here. Um, you know, we've been doing a ton of night trolling. I am now back in a boat. I am in Green Bay and we're catching a pile of walleyes. So this video is going to be kind of a thrown together of the last few nights of night trolling with a ton of tips if you guys are new to night trolling, um, if it's something you want to try, if it's something you do a lot in the summer but you want to apply it to spring. Uh, we guys are going to give you guys the rundown, show you some fish catches, everything you need to know about night trolling walleyes and uh, big walleyes in the spring. Stay tuned. All right guys, Oops. we are hooked up on another one here. This is on our old faithful green Smithwick, which has been crushing fish all night. We should probably have a few more of these on, but this is my last one and I need to stock up on more. Doesn't seem too bad. One of the biggest things with trolling is just that you take your time. There's no rod pumping. You're just slowly reeling on that fish. You got the drag set so if that fish wants to go, he can. And it's just a slow, methodical fight much different than other types of fighting a fish. But especially when you're trolling super slow like this, you just want to take your time because you're not sure how well that fish is pinned. And if you're going to do it by yourself, the best way to do it is to kind of hold your rod low until that board clears like this. You kind of swing it, the board back to yourself. Load the rod up as much as possible. I think we got nice fish on here. Clip that first one. Unclip the second one. We still got the rod all loaded up. He's taking me way over here. I think this is going to be a better fish, or he's hooked in the side of his mouth. We will see. Which we are hopefully about to get. Yes. <laughs> nice fish. Just nice fish. Barely tail hook. You know, they're not biting a crazy good night. A lot of times you can kind of tell how good the bite is how they're eating that bait now and it's literally just stung with one hook in the corner of the mouth. There we go guys, that is absolutely what we're out here after. Beautiful pre-spawn walleyes. We're gonna take it like that all night long. Better? Sounds Maybe. like it. Oh, there's a good fight here. Oh. He's up. Oh, on. he is fat. <laughs> Keep him coming. Just a balloon. Keep him coming. Ooh, it's hard to see on the camera. <laughs> Got him. Oh my god. Oh yeah. That thing is huge. All right, so obviously we're running planer boards when we're doing this. Now, you can kind of run whatever planer boards you want, really. I just hooked myself. There we go. But you obviously have to have some kind of light. Now, I'll go ahead and link these down below. These are T lights. Green, obviously for your right side. Red, obviously for your left side. And uh, I also put reflective, kind of like DOT highway tape up here so you can see them really good with the light. And uh, a lot of times these lights will reflect out the flag and you can see that tail tail working even in the dark. So I'll go ahead and link these down below. Um, but especially somewhere like Green Bay where there's a lot of fishing pressure, a lot of guys at, out at night, you want people to see which side's which so they can tell which way you're going when you're running. And obviously you need the lights in your board. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. I attach mine just with 3M Velcro tabs like that so if I'm trolling during the day and don't need the lights just take them off and these things are pretty cool they just turn on and off just by the twist this one's on pretty good there you go now it's off ready to store so that's my setup in the dark like this super easy to use like I said I'll, I'll link these lights down below if you guys want to pick some up they're super cheap super inexpensive and uh, they work great are hooked up feels decent nice fish this lights probably super bright <laughs> I'm gonna have to unclip the board here in a second because we are flying solo. We will catch up to you guys after we clip the board here. Oh yeah, decent fish for sure. Got him. <laughs> there we go. Nice. It's on that olive Elite 8 Smithwick. Things get down nice and quick for us. You can troll them tight and that one absolutely clobbered it. When you see them T-bone them like that, they definitely want them. Look at that, another chunky, big Green Bay walleye. Awesome fish. Absolutely smoked that Smithwick, we'll let that one go. Wanna pick one? See you later. Awesome. 
All right, as far as what we're running for baits, um, it's all stick baits this time of year. You know, we're trolling these big flats, basically like 13 feet and less, all the way up into like three, four feet a lot of the times. And if I can only pick three baits um, to, to fish out here in Green Bay, kind of no matter where I am throughout the bay, one would absolutely be a Rapala Scatter app. If you're not familiar with this style of bait, this is actually a balsa bait. And uh, it's got a curved lip here, which gives it a real kind of erratic action. Even at a slow speed, you know, we're trolling a lot of like 0.8 to 1.1 1, 1 this time of year. That bait gets back there, it's kicking straight and all of a sudden it pops out to the side and comes back. It is a great triggering bait. That thing crushes fish pretty much no matter where we take it in the spring. Another one which you fish a lot of is uh, Smithwick Elite 8s or Perfect 10s. These things have a little bit steeper dive curve than kind of your standard Husky Jerk or your standard Smithwick. This one's an Elite 8, but the Perfect 10 is kind of the size up, and uh, we've been catching a ton of fish on both of these. And uh, you know, most of the time we're letting out between like 35 and like 60 feet of line on most of these. The other one is just your standard Smithwick Suspending Rogue. This is like the tried and true, one of the greatest uh, uh, early spring walleye baits of all time. At a slow speed, they just have this super nice roll to them and uh, just a killer when the water is very cold. We don't want baits that just have a ton of act crazy action right now. Um, just that slow roll is all we really need. Um, so those are kind of the three baits that we have a ton of success on um, trolling early in the spring like this. Okay guys, I need to work out more. My arm's already sore. I'm thinking this is a huge one. Let's hope. Keep walking back. It's Keep walking. Fish. Keep reeling. Got him. Nice chunker there. Fatty for sure. Oh, I got a fatty. Oh, he's big. Okay, I'm happy about this. He's a chunker. I just got out here at like seven and very impressed with uh, the Fox River and I am excited to keep fishing for more of these bad boys. All right, so boat control is huge this time of year. We want to be fishing very slow, number one. All my speeds that I'm running are basically 0.7, um, all the way up to 1, 1, 1, 2. And whenever current is available, I want to be trolling into it. And the reason for that is, if I'm trolling with the current, I have to go much faster to achieve action on my bait. I can go very slow into the current, and that bait's going to have a lot more action at a much slower speed. So I can give that fish the illusion that that bait's doing a lot when it's really not moving that much, especially when we got water temps that are like 33 to 45. Those are pretty cold temps. Those fish are not going to chase a super long way. So the more action we can give that bait trolling into the current um, is super important. Now, boat control wise, what I'm doing, I'm running my kicker and all I'm doing is just leaving my kicker on in gear. And this is putting me along at about, I would say, half a mile an hour or a little bit better than that, right? Then I take my trolling motor and I put it like on two. And all I'm doing with my trolling motor is just using that for direction. So it's super simple. If you don't have a lot of wind or if you're not gonna do it for a very long time, um, all you could really, you could probably just use your trolling motor. But um, I kind of use this combination of my kicker and my trolling motor to kind of achieve that perfect speed and kind of hug the brakes and get me right where I need to be. Good thing. Uh, average for Green Bay. He's got a little fight to him. Oh, he is good. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. You know, I kind of rewatched a whole bunch of that footage last night. Um, you know, it was kind of grainy. Obviously, it's always dark out. Um, it was absolutely pouring. It's given kind of a rough few days actually of fishing weather-wise, but uh, the bite's been good. You know, this is a pattern that I just kind of wanted to showcase and show you guys some specifics because in future YouTube videos throughout the spring, which there's going to be a ton of walleye ones, we're going to be doing a lot of trolling, and I kind of want you guys to have some of the specifics, um, some of the kind of how-tos and stuff like that before we're just kind of out there, you know, catching fish, catching fish, and not talking a whole lot about the specifics so i really appreciate you guys watching hopefully this video was useful to you guys night trolling can kind of be intimidating if you're not used to doing it a lot um, so hopefully this kind of pointed in the right direction puts you on the right course to catch a whole bunch of big spring walleyes this pattern pretty much works everywhere i go 
and then northern zones um, kind of where i'm from northern wisconsin if you're fishing northern minnesota this pattern pretty much holds good a lot of times even into june when these fish are way up shallow on flats so um, like i said thank you guys for watching if you're not yet please subscribe stay tuned for more videos in the near future because we got a ton of spring walleye content on the way thanks for watching